Okay, so I simulate uh, came out of an idea to simplify the way that you run simulations in health specifically. So up to our innovation, essentially you had to buy a very expensive mannequin and then you had to put a very expensive monitor on it in order to provide information to the clinician to make clinical decisions. So in order to get around that, you needed some sort of technology that took all the smarts out of the mannequin and put it external to the mannequin. And that's what we did. We took two iPads and we made the iPad look like a monitor and then you drive it with another iPad. And it simplified the entire process. So now instead of having to cut around 60 kilos of mannequin plus a monitor defibrillator of another 10 kilos, uh, costing around one hundred fifty thousand dollars, you could do the whole thing for around ten thousand dollars. So, did you start off in this industry at all? How did you land up getting involved in this? Yeah. So, my background is as an intensive care paramedic. That's mm -hmm. where I spent uh, most of my career. But I run a training company in Canberra called Parasol, and it does training and advanced life support. Um, but mainly, it was a part of my volunteer life with the Australian Resuscitation Council that we needed a piece of equipment. Uh, that we couldn't afford to buy for sets of this mannequins and defibrillators. So we needed a solution for that. And we just mucked around with ideas and this is what we came up with. So did you try to access funding? How did you go from that, okay, I've, I've identified a problem, how do I actually come up with a solution and do I fund it? Do I find the cheapest way around it? Uh, yeah, so um, I'm fortunate that I managed to be able to fund it myself. Um, and, uh, what happened was that I ran a course up here with a, with my business, now business partner, Dr. Anthony Lewis. He'd come up and I sort of had all my wireframes and everything uh, well advanced. And he said, well, I've got the same sort of idea. In fact, today I just met with an app developer to try and flesh this idea out. So by the end of that weekend, we were actually uh, had the, the nucleus for a business and we went ahead. So Anthony put some money in, I put some money in. And uh, we proceeded to start developing the application. And how did you go about finding your first customer? So what we did was we went to the biggest health simulation conference in the world called IMSH, which was in San Diego, and we decided if we're going to roll the dice, roll it big. So we, we went there, we displayed, and we just got inundated with people, just fascinated. In fact, uh, what we did was we did a little bit different. Instead of using a mainstream mannequin, we used a six foot teddy bear. And we put all our stuff on that and gave the teddy bear a, you know, a heart rate and a saturation and all little things that people look for in medicine. Um, and people kept stop saying, what's the bear about? And when you told them, they went, ah, oh, I get that. So, hmm. So why do you think nobody had come up with this idea previously? What had stopped them? Well, there, there was some apps and very, fundamental apps out there, but they didn't quite have the level of realism that you needed. And at that stage, uh, Simon, which is a really nice little app, uh, it just didn't do everything. It gave you enough to sort of get by, but if you want to do this professionally and give clinicians the information that they need to, to pass an exam, example, you had to be accurate. So we said, well, we're going to take this to the next level. So what we did was we took an existing concept which I'd already come up with without even knowing this sim one existed, but Anthony knew it existed. So between the two of us, we just said, we're just going to make a, a, a better system. And, and that's, how often do you see that, you know, these small little innovations actually produce amazing results? Very often people will look at something like that and say, well, somebody's already done it and they'll just can the idea, mm -hmm. whereas what you've done is had a look, something was slightly like that, and you've improved it. Um, do you think that's a really good strategy in terms of looking at innovation that way? I think, well, absolutely. I, I think what happens is people come up with an idea and then they, they throw it out there, but it's, it's they don't either have the funding or the time, or both, to be able to push that to where they want it to go. And I think Simon is a, an example of that. And, you know, a great idea by a clinician, but for, for whatever reason it stopped at a relatively early um, part of its potential development. So what we did was we said, well, we're going to take it the next step. So I think there's probably lots of systems out there that people can go, I'm going to make a better wheel, if you like. Mm -hmm. And that's all we did. We just we we took an idea and we just 
built on it. Um, from two different perspectives, in fact. So from my perspective, I was looking for a, for a training tool to, to in ALS courses, and my business partner was looking for it to work on helicopters. So you know, even though the concept was the same, the outcomes were meant to be different. And what we did then was we said, okay, well, how do we do this now? Fortunately, Anthony is just such a lateral thinker. He just allowed all these ideas to come out, but by, between the two of us, we come up with a solution, and we've been building on it ever since. We're up to version five now. So. Right. And what are what are the plans for iSimulate going forward? So iSimulate, uh, we have three products at the moment. We have ALSI, which is the main system that we sell as our flagship product. We have an obstetric simulator for doing the same thing with fetuses, essentially, uh, and we have a stethoscope that allows you to listen to people's heart, lungs bow sounds that you want them to hear. If I put something on you, for instance, I'm going to hear your real lung sounds. But we can change that like we do with everything. And then next year, we're already well into development, we'll be launching our new platform, which is essentially a simulation system in a box. And this has come from our users who, who keep telling us what they want. OK, now you've done this, why can't you do that? Why can't you do that? Very much driven by our users, our customers, and partners as we see them. Do you have a formal way of making sure that you constantly put the customer at the centre of your business, or is this just the whole philosophy of the organisation? Yeah. It's the whole philosophy. Everything we do is from feedback. Um, you know, we don't advertise, uh, we go to shows, we meet people, I travel around the world meeting people, and they tell me what they want. And then I come back to Anthony, he rolls his eyes, and. Uh, and then he goes to our developer and he rolls his eyes and uh, on it goes. But we get what our customers want. And that's what we're all about. And that's been the secret of our success, listening to our customers. And you, you know, in a partnership, how have you found that that has worked for you? Because you've had your own company in terms mm. of the training company and now you have a business partner. Yep. Do you find that it brings real strengths and different opportunities? and? And obviously in any partnership there's often challenges. How do you work around things like that? Very, very fortunate to have somebody that is pretty well opposite to me. So all the weaknesses I have, he doesn't have. And between the two of us we make a really good pair. I look after the business and I have enough clinical knowledge to help. But Anthony's clinical knowledge as an anaesthetist is much, much greater than mine. So. The wise thing is, he looks after all the clinical information, I look after running the business. And because of that, we don't get on each other's feet, we respect what each other do, we respect each other, uh, and it works so, so well. Are there any major challenges that you have faced in getting our simulator off the ground? It's not working with a, a, uh, something like an iPad, you would think it would be fairly easy, but the ecosystem of, of Apple makes it very restrictive to do everything we wanted to do. Fortunately, Apple um, has been very supportive to us and we've moved on to the App Store and where we used to be in our own MDM and that created challenges with profiles and a range of other technical issues which we've now resolved. So, and getting, so for the moment, uh, iPad Pros are really, really hard to get. Uh, so, you know, we have difficulty getting products sometimes producing bags, changing, trying to anticipate what Apple's doing is always a challenge. I don't think anybody can do that. So trying to keep on top of that is, is our biggest challenge, just what's coming up, what can we do? You know, people will ask for things that we can't do. So for instance, they'll say, can you give it to us on an iPhone? And we'll go, no, we can't. Well, we could, but it would be totally unusable. So we make certain choices about how we're going to make our technology work and work easier. Because sometimes you can shrink, 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 but it doesn't necessarily give you a better outcome. And if you have to get any, um, you know, budding entrepreneurs sort of three tips about starting their journey, what would they be? Well, I think the first thing you're going to do if you're going to do anything is you need to you need to work out what you want to achieve, and then you need to write it down. And I know people go that all the time, but I wrote everything down, that the plan, how it was going to look, how I envisaged it, how we were going to disguise it um, so it looked like a real system. 
So it's about that thought process that's behind what you want to achieve. It's no sense just having a great idea. You've got to work out how you're going to do it. And then you've got to go to the market and find you know, someone who's going to write it for you. In, in our case, a partner that you can really trust to actually deliver on your vision. So there's a lot of background. Don't just jump in and do it. What you really need to do is you need to plan. How is it going to do it? Because if you don't plan, it's not going to work. Have you found Canberra a supportive environment in which to start a business? Absolutely. Um, we got support from the, the, the innovation grants to start with. We, uh, we, you know, the government, export, all these people, all are behind you to give you every opportunity to do it. And we've got support from the chamber, support from both the local um, and the federal government. And without them, I don't know if we could have done it. Great. Thanks, Peter, for sharing your story with us today. Thanks very much for listening.